I'm here to tell you that fake news is going to kill all of you. Okay, and um, you're not really ready for it either. And the reason that you're not and none of us are ready for it is because we've been lied to our entire lives. We've been lied to for generations. And we've been lied to by, of all people, our kindergarten teachers. Um, you know how they kept telling you that sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you? Yeah, that's wrong. Because words, when you mix them with a generous, you know, dozen scoops of lies, a massive sprinkling of malice, words can very much hurt you. Words can, in fact, incite a bunch of people with actual sticks and actual stones to literally break your bones. Take India, for example, right? I mean, you all heard of Netflix and chill, yes? Um, they've gone straight to WhatsApp and kill, which is not a good thing. What am I talking about? Just this year alone, dozens of people in various Indian states have been lynched, not for eating beef burgers, as you may imagine, but uh, because they were suspected of being child kidnappers. Why? Because prior to each and every one of these incidents, which are mapped across a dozen Indian states, Viral WhatsApp messages spread. They had text and they had, oh, this is already on, great. Um, you can't read this, I'm going to read this out to you. They had text and they had pictures. Uh, the pictures are of arrested alleged child kidnappers. Some pictures are of their alleged victims. Some of them are, in fact, of murdered children. Obviously, we're not going to show you those. What does that message say? This message in particular reads, Beware, several gangs of 15 to 20 Rohingya Muslims have come to Indore and accompanied by women and children. They carry weapons and they come around 2 a.m. and they will go into any house where they hear children. So please keep your doors locked and please spread this as widely as you can. Naturally, forward as received, so people did in fact spread it out. What happened then is that there are variations of this depending on which state you're talking about. In the eastern states where people are afraid of, say, Rohingya refugees, the alleged culprits will be Rohingyas. In the southern states, they'll be outsiders. But the pattern is always the same. They target a already suspect, already marginalized minority, and they incite violence against them. It's ridiculously successful. It's so successful that one government team that was actually sent to the village to tell people that please don't kill people because of these WhatsApp rumors were killed because people thought that you know, they, in fact, were the child kidnappers trying to confuse them. That's how effective this is. Um, the pictures are all genuine, except that they're not any, not one of them has to do with the actual event that they're talking about. They're from uh, different events. Some of them are years old. But naturally, no one stops to bother because, I mean, cliche alert, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? And if a picture is worth a thousand words, well, how much is a video worth? Take this video, for example. Okay, that's really convincing, right? There's this child standing on the street, looks very desi. Two guys come, pick her up, or him, and they take off, right? Now, how can you doubt that? It's right there in front of you. This video was used in Tamil Nadu, and then later it was used in Maharashtra. Of course, in Tamil Nadu, the, the caption is Tamil, and in Maharashtra, the caption is Marathi. Where does this video come from? This video was made right here in Karachi, in Pakistan. This was made by Roshni Helpline, which is uh, an NGO that works with tracking abducted and abused children. If you look at the actual video, in a little while these guys come back. They put the kid back on the, uh, on the road, and they say that, and there's a, they hold up a banner saying that it only takes one minute for a child to be abducted in Karachi. A video that was meant to save lives has claimed a dozen lives. So far, I haven't checked my feed yet. It's possibly it's gone up to 20. Who knows? If you think that's crazy, then <laughs> you're in for another surprise. If you're here of Pizzagate, Pizzagate is fantastic. I mean, if you're thinking that, you know, oh my God, this is India, low literacy rate, blah, blah, blah. This is from the United States. Pizzagate was a conspiracy theory spread around the time of the US elections, which alleged that top members of the Democratic Party are, in fact, Satanists. Well, maybe they are. And um, they sacrifice children in their, ritual, uh, in their various satanic rituals, and they do it in the basement of a pizza shop. Okay? I mean, forget for a moment why some of the richest people in the world would need to rent a pizza shop basement. Um, logic does not apply here. Now, you may think that this is crazy, but according to one poll, 14% of Trump voters actually believe this. This, this, this genius that you see over here, um, what's his name? Yeah, Edgar Madison Welch. 
drove like several hundred kilometers from his hometown with uh, uh, automatic weapons, which of course you can buy at Walmart because, you know, America. <laughs> and he went in there and he opened fire and he's like, I'm here to rescue the kids. Okay, there were no kids because there was no basement because, you know, he's an idiot. Um, and now he's serving five years. And what does he have to say now? He's like, well, it's possible that like, my intel wasn't like 100% correct. Yeah, no kidding, Welch. Um, luckily, no one died, right? But that wasn't the case in 2015, when a young white male named Dylan Storm Roof marched into a black, um, or should I say African-American, I don't know, African-American church in Charleston, South Carolina, opened fire. He killed nine people, including women, including uh, men, possibly some children, not sure about that. Why did he do that? Because for years he had been convinced that the white race in America was facing genocide. Who were they facing genocide against? Well, of course, black people, right? They breed like rabbits, they commit more crime than anybody else. That's what he believed. Why did he believe that? Because for four years he had been immersed in the far-right blogosphere. Websites which actively uh, print fake or misleading news to suit this narrative. So it doesn't take a single event like Pizzagate to trigger someone. It can be a slow build. It can be a slow build. And when it comes to the right wing, the extreme right wing, you'll note that extreme right and fake news goes together like halwa and puri, like malaria and mosquitoes, because it is, it is a virus, and we'll be coming back to that. Um, Europe has seen a plethora of fake news coming up. Ironically, somehow always right before an election in which the right wing stands to gain. I wonder why that is, right? Take this picture, for example. This is a montage, 16 images, okay? This originated in Germany, and then it went Italy, Netherlands, Greece, England, France, blah, blah, blah. This, uh, there's no caption here, so I'll just explain. This was made, and it was captioned that these are white European victims of migrants and refugees. Most of the fake news in Europe, which uh, uh, caters to the right wing, paints migrants as criminals. Um, about 70% of these fake news reports were about migrants being criminals. None of them is verified. None of them are true. In fact, this, these images of all of these women, none of them are even from Germany. Some are from the UK, some are from the US. Some are victims of domestic abuse. Some are victims of police abuse. Some of them are, in fact, actors wearing stage makeup. And this guy over here, and I say guy, isn't even a woman at all. That's a man. Okay, but people believe it. People believe it, and then they act upon it. Um, why do they do that? We'll talk about that later. Now, okay, it's not always about malice. It's not always about a political agenda. Sometimes it's just the, possibly the most dangerous combination in human history, which is stupidity and arrogance. You put those together, and you have a disaster every time. So I'm going to come to Pakistan now, and I'm going to tell you about... Liaquat Ali Khan, now read this headline, the CIA assassinated the Pakistan's first Prime Minister Liaquat documents. I mean, dun dun chik chik, what a scene, right? So, where did this come? Now, all of a sudden, a um, couple years ago, this is from last year, but this came like two years ago, a bunch of news channels, a bunch of blogs, a bunch of uh, newspapers ran this story, and I read it, and I'm like, my God, I mean, how is it that no one else has ever heard about this, and, you know, XYZ News operating out of Chicha Watni knows? Uh, <coughs> The document exists, right? So I read the story, which is really the first thing you have to do. You have to read the story, right? And it said that the U.S. State Department had released a document uh, called about the assassination of Liaquat Ali Khan. So I actually, what do you do in that kind of a situation? Um, you Google the U.S. State Department, you go to its website, you find the document. The document very much exists, right? Except that it is a telegram sent at the time of the assassination from the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi to uh, the U.S. State Department, in which they basically reproduced a local column written in an Urdu new, uh, magazine, in which the author was alleging that the U.S. had killed uh, Liaquat Ali Khan. Humne, we just read like the first line, and they were like, dude, this is it. Okay? Um, it wasn't it. Now, here's where a little common sense comes in handy, right? That wasn't the case. Even funnier example, is this one, Chinese cross-border rocket attack kills 158 Indian soldiers, right? This also ran as breaking news. Now, along, you see, here's the trick about lying, right? And you can use this in your life if, if you need to. The best lies have to contain an element of the truth, right? It's like, you know, when you give a kid a candy, 
to make sure his like, cough syrup goes down better. It's, it's easier to believe. Where did this news come from? Why did Pakistani channels run it? There is some news to it. Chinese troops did conduct a live fire exercise in, uh, near the Tibet border, and that was televised on Chinese TV, right? That made it to Pakistani WhatsApp with the message saying that 158 Pakistan Indian soldiers had been killed. We so desperately wanted that to be true that everybody ran it. Again, had they suffered their biggest wartime casualty loss after 1971, I assure you it would be front page news everywhere. But it wasn't. And we went for it and we swallowed it. Because there's another rule of thumb. Uh, the more volatile a situation, and this uh, news came when the China and India were engaged in a standoff at Dokla, if you guys remember that. So it seemed plausible. Anytime you have a crisis situation, fake news proliferates. And there's no bigger crisis than, say, Syria right now, right? The Syrian civil war. How many of you have seen this picture, right? A lot of people, uh, this went viral, okay? And what was the caption in it? The caption was, a young boy sleeping with his parents, hashtag Syria. I mean, it's tragic. Look at that, you know? I mean, I saw this and I was like, my God, this is, this is truly horrible. It would have been really horrible. There's stuff like this going on in Syria, but this picture is not accurate, right? Why not? Because um, this picture was actually taken, it was part of a Saudi photographer's art project. This is his nephew, and those are just piles of stone, and this is not in Syria, this is in Saudi Arabia. But it spread everywhere. It took a Norwegian journalist to track down the guy and uh, interview him. Oh, sorry, we skipped a slide. Um, there's a third picture here of the kid going like this, so you can just imagine that. Um, he tracked him down, he asked him, okay, did you do this? And he was like, no, it was an art project. Now, here's the crazy part, okay? Alotebi, who's the guy, who, the photographer who took this, actually approached the first person on Twitter who was posting it with this caption, and he said, listen, I'm the guy who took the picture. And he's like, yeah, but you're so famous now, why don't you just say it's from Syria, yaar? You know, so the guy was like, but no, it's not from Syria. He's like, yeah, but just go ahead. I mean, what's the big deal? This sort of stuff does happen in Syria, right? Yeah, it does, but this didn't. Um, here's another picture that you guys may have seen. Anybody seen this one? Anybody seen this one? Anybody know where it's from? That's from the APS attack. Anyone else? Peshawar? That's the consensus? Wrong. It's not. <laughs> okay. It's not. It's not. And I'll tell you, how, how do I know? I mean, did I like, you know, travel to... APS, did I check the archive? No, 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 no. It, it took me like as much time as it takes for me to click this back and click this forward. How? You take this picture, you use tech, right? You go on a reverse image search website. You go to a place like Tenai, okay? That's T-E-N-E-Y-E. -E. You guys might want to check it out. You upload this and you'll find out where is this from? It's not APS. It's not Syria. It's not Lebanon. This is from Israel. It's from an Israeli city called Ashkelon which uh, uh, of a child who was a victim of a rocket attack, and it dates to, I believe, 2008. Now, this is one occasion in which tech can come to your help, right? But it doesn't always do that. If you take the same picture um, and, you and you search it, say, on Google reverse images, you will get the latest result first. And the latest result will tell you, army public school, right? Not army public school. Um, so tech can fail you. Uh, you have to move beyond it. If you were to say to this on the reverse search in Google, you'd have to keep clicking, nickling, clicking, clicking, reading, 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 and finally you might actually arrive at the actual source. But that takes time, and let's face, face it, like most of us don't even read beyond the headlines anymore. And that is where fake news wins. So what do you do? If fake news is a virus, maybe the best way to deal with it is with a vaccine. And in this case, what would that be? It wouldn't be like some kind of injection you're taking. You would have to inoculate yourself with actual information. You will have to be incredibly skeptical. And don't be afraid to just keep asking people, yeah, really, that's great, yeah, but where did you get that from? Don't be afraid of being that, of like annoying your uncle on WhatsApp when he posts things like, you know, uh, this Chinese man had fruit and then he had water after that and his stomach exploded, you know. Astaghfirullah. You'll be like, no, uncle, I, I don't think that that's really possible, you know. Um, people will hate you for it. Make no mistake about it. People will hate you for it because um, we are hardwired to believe, you see. That's, that's our nature. I mean, we've reached the point where we had a sitting minister in the last government threaten Israel with nuclear war over the fake news story. This actually happened. I can't name names right now. We believe because we're hardwired to believe, right? Um, 
And I mean that quite literally. When you see a piece of information or a piece of news that supports your belief, that seems like familiar, you literally get high off of it. Because your brain sends a shot of dopamine to you. You feel good. You feel acknowledged. And when you see that, gee, I'm not the only one who believes that, you know, uh, there's a satanic ring in the basement of a pizza parlor, it creates the illusion of consensus. There are old-fashioned ways of doing this. If you see a never trust a story which doesn't come without a link. If you see a link, search up the website, search up the author. Now, here's the problem. Even if you do all of this, you're still most likely going to lose. Because it, it's not enough for its... Uh, for the people who spread fake news, they don't just have to convince you. It's enough to just confuse you. All they have to do is muddy the waters. And even if you think of something is factual, you will, they will create enough doubt in you that you will take a step back. And you will not believe it. Also, you're up against... Literally, a, you're not just up against a biology, you're up against a billion dollar industry, right? You have states purveying fake news, you have very wealthy lobbies, very wealthy pressure groups, and also you have people making ridiculous amounts of profit from this. You are up against confirmation bias, which is our instinctive need to believe something that we so desperately want to be true. The hardest thing you can ever do in this life is to check your biases. Finally, I'm just going to tell you one thing. If you ever get WhatsApped a screenshot of a story, maybe it looks something like this, right? Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't buy it. Don't buy it, okay? This didn't actually happen, but for a friend of mine made this as a joke, and literally till today I'm responding to people saying, Sir, Mubarak Bado. Take a look at this. It got me thinking about my full-time employees and their ability to survive on $8 an hour in New York City. And foremost in all of our minds has been the loss and the grief felt by the people of Orlando. Most of us don't get our health care through the marketplace. We get it through our job or through Medicare or Medicaid. And what you should know is that thanks to the Affordable Care Act, your coverage is better today than it was before. Women can get free checkups. In another four or five years, you're actually going to have video. That uh, video software that can make anybody say anything you want. You think it's bad enough with Photoshop and, and, and bad headlines? Uh, the apocalypse is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's all. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>